Death is a specter that influences every aspect of motorcycles, whether we're aware of it or not. Motorcycles and death are like peas and carrots. Everything about motorcycles is a balance of risk versus reward. And really risk is just a euphemism for a horrific motorcycle crash that leaves you dying on the side of the road. Should you lane split between two cars? Well, the reward is getting to your destination faster. The risk is hitting other cars and getting pulled into the wheel well and crushed. Should you practice wheelies on the highway? The reward is gaining skill and being able to impress people with your mastery of a motorcycle. The risk is that you lose control and fly into something and explode into pieces like, like a human pinata at a quinceanera. I mean, just think about it. What is the most common motorcycle topic? Gear. And what's the primary reason that people wanna wear gear? To look like Trinity from the Matrix, of course. But another reason is to avoid injury and death. Ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet with auto tissue. Think about the first time you told somebody that cares about you that you were interested in getting a motorcycle. What did they say? If they're anything like my parents, they probably said something like, hey, if you've got enough money to buy a motorcycle, you should move out because you're 25 and you need to get a fucking life. Or if they actually loved you, they might have said something about it being dangerous and them not wanting to think about making funeral arrangements for you. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube talking about how dangerous motorcycles are and motorcycle deaths and death statistics. And that's not really interesting to me. I'm not here to talk about that. You can read a million blogs dissecting those numbers each year, or you can go watch one mind numbing MC Rider video if that's what you're looking for. Oh my God, I need to stop ripping on this guy. He seems so nice. His name is Kevin. Uh, if you see this, I don't know why I'm like this. Please don't hold it against me. So what's more interesting to me, and something that I kind of had to come to on my own over time, is death's influence on motorcycle culture. The MSF never talked about how you might feel if somebody that you know dies on their motorcycle. They didn't explain how to talk about the dangers of riding motorcycles with other people around you who maybe don't share your love for motorcycles and don't want you to ride anymore and think that you're unnecessarily putting your life at risk. And so that's what I wanna talk about here. I wanna talk about why you're gonna never escape the topic of death around motorcycles, at least as long as you own one, and explore some parts of this phenomenon so that you're better prepared for the topic in the future. And I, I just wanna say this, I don't have any intent to disrespect anyone who's died on their bike, but I'm gonna to try to keep the mood as light as possible. This topic is very, very uncomfortable for many people, including myself. And the humor is one of the ways that I cope with the awkwardness and the loss and the sadness. So stay tuned. The first time you have to engage with the idea of death around motorcycles is probably before you even get the chance to sit on one. Humans are generally social creatures, so once you get the maybe I should get a motorcycle idea popping in your head, you'll probably want to share that idea with friends, family, or random people on the internet. And when you do, odds are that some of them are going to say something like, uh, You can't ride a motorcycle! Motorcycles are death traps! Which leads some to ask a reasonable sounding question, how does someone looking to get their first bike convince the people in their life telling them stuff like this to just chill out? Often they're asking for the facts and logic to be able to throw in the face of the naysayer and decimate their arguments. But of course, this is a flawed premise from the start. You have to internalize the reality that you can't know that you're not gonna end up being a motorcycle death statistic. The first time someone I personally knew died in a motorcycle was an older football coach in his 60s. He didn't get hit by a car that didn't see him. He didn't make an error riding that took him off the road. He had a heart attack, which led him to lose control, and then he died at the scene. Even with the best techniques and practices, freak stuff happens. And on a bike, those things are just gonna be lethal more often. Does it mean you shouldn't ride? It doesn't have to, assuming that you internalize that reality and you're okay with the inherent danger. But don't expect to be able to convince all your friends and family to be okay with you taking that same risk. All you can actually do is demonstrate to them that you understand these risks and that it's a choice you're willingly making. Shit, my parents still try to get me to stop riding and I'm in my fucking 30s and have been riding consistently for 15 goddamn years. So if y'all are in the situation where you're trying to basically convince your significant other, there are maybe a few things that you can do to try to convince them and those things are focused on safety because that is probably their main concern is they don't want you getting hurt 
they don't want you to die they want to keep you in their lives and this is these are good things these are good things you know basically they they don't want you to place yourself in harm's way which is essentially what you're doing on a motorcycle now you might have people in your life that don't respond well even after you lay out how you willingly accept these additional risks and they might just be frustrated with you for a little bit but it could also lead to significant strife between you and someone really important to you when someone talks about how their significant other made them sell their motorcycle or they chose to sell it after a life event like having a child it doesn't make them any less of a man or whatever the math just changed in their life around risk and what's important to them an inevitably common piece of advice i see to these situations that i don't agree with at all is to be a fucking dickhead to the people in your life who care about you enough to tell you their concerns i'm not talking about random people on the internet fuck random people on the internet maybe it's because i'm getting fucking old or maybe i'm just reaping the antisocial seeds that i've sown over the decades but i don't have a lot of close friends who genuinely understand and care about me so the thought of being a fucking asshole to those people over something as trivial as getting a motorcycle just doesn't seem like a good idea to me wrapping this thought up make sure that you internalize the idea that you can't be sure that riding a motorcycle won't lead to your untimely death and demonstrate your understanding of that reality the people around you who care enough to express concerns about your safety you can't control how they'll react you can only be honest with them and yourself now, as much as it can be annoying dealing with people talking to you about dying riding motorcycles, it's definitely not as bad as the feeling you might actually die on your bike, and that may come up more often than you expect. No matter who you are, at some point, you're going to have a close call. Now, it might not even be that close a call. Like, someone starts to swerve into you, and then head checks in time, and, you know, swerves back into their lane. You might still feel, for a brief moment, like you were just super close to dying. You might even wreck, and in addition to have to deal with whatever medical or insurance bullshit comes along with that, it's going to be a scary moment. And fear can come from a lot of different places. I mean, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that you probably don't want to die, or at least not in a fiery motorcycle crash. Although I just want to put it here because I have no idea how this is going to fit into any other video I make. Uh, my preferred way of dying is absolutely on my motorcycle, and ideally it's going like 150 while like riding a wheelie and just smashing right into a wall or something, you know, fucking instantaneously. Maybe instead of deftly serving away from danger, you froze. Or worse, maybe you got really angry and flipped someone off, revved your engine, or tried to create a physical altercation. Great job. Keith Code doesn't teach that in the old superbike school. You're not a bad person if you do either of those things. You might just need more experience, or to be more mindful behind the wheel, or some fucking therapy if you're the last one. Having a close call might lead you to feel some anxiety about getting back on your bike again. Now, many people get over this with time. You know, you go do more parking lot drills, you watch an accident analysis YouTube video like your boy makes, you wear more gear, and the fear and anxiety melts away and you get back on your bike. But it might not, or at least not without a lot of time. I know people who got in a wreck and then immediately went and fixed their bike up, bought all the parts, got it all installed super quick, but then took a really long time before actually throwing their leg back over the seat. And that's okay. Getting over an accident can't let a crash scare you. In life, you get knocked down, you got to get your back ass back up. Don't get scared. Fuck being scared. You can't be scared out here on the streets, man. If you've been riding for a while, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. So I'm really just trying to front load this for newer riders to think about now because you're just very, very likely to have something like this happen at some point in your riding lifetime. And you know, I hope you keep wanting to ride, but I would never hold it against anyone who decided to stop. The longer you ride, the more likely you are to make friends with other people who ride motorcycles as well, which means Statistically speaking, some are you going to find out what it feels like to know someone who dies on their motorcycle. You know, oddly in some ways, I think a lot of people find it easier to consider the loss of their own life over someone they know and care about. There are many common ways to work through someone's death, but it seems like there's another layer of the process when it happens during a hobby that's important to us. You can see how it affects people when you read those Reddit posts, and there are different ways people internalize and express how they feel about this loss. 
They might talk fondly about the person as a rider, maybe share photos of them on their bike, or regale on the antics of an anecdote. Anger is also a very common understandable emotion, and many posts call for the community to take steps to protect themselves from a similar tragedy, most often through wearing gear, but sometimes just cursing people out who make careless or absent-minded decisions that they feel led to the loss of their loved one. What all of these posts have in common is that the writer is looking to put any number of emotions out to the community that can empathize and understand with that loss better than maybe anyone that they know personally. There are plenty of resources out there to help cope with the loss of someone you know. Every funeral home is going to have literature, there are psychologists and counselors you can connect with, or you can find all kinds of articles and YouTube videos covering the aspects of death from the pragmatic to the philosophical, so I'm not going to go into any of that. What I specifically want to try to help you with, though, is understanding how the tragedy of experiencing someone's loss while doing something you love could affect you, and how to get past that if you want to. And to do that, I want to tell you how someone's death made me rethink a hobby that I loved. In order to elucidate a point I'm trying to make, I hope you'll indulge me because I want to tell a short personal story. One of my favorite sports has always been American style football because it's a game that not only requires athleticism, but it's complex and strategic. I played like all the sports as a kid, but football was my favorite. I was really good at pretty much every aspect of football. And honestly, if I had better guidance in high school, it's possible I could have played through college and maybe even beyond. Even after I gave up on the idea that I was going to be able to play at a high level, I kept watching it religiously until a few years ago. Aaron Hernandez was a very successful football player about the same age as me. He was an all-American college football player and was in the early days of what looked to be a successful, long football career on the undeniably dominant New England Patriots in the early 2010s. But all of that ended when he was arrested on suspicion of murder, a charge that he was actually found guilty of and sentenced to life in prison. Two years later, after he had just been found innocent of an additional murder charge, he committed suicide while in a maximum security prison. They did an autopsy on Hernandez and found that he had a very advanced form of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or more commonly, CTE. It's in the same general category as other very serious and devastating brain diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, Huntington's disease. There have been a number of athletes who, after committing heinous acts of violence on themselves or others, were also found to have CTE, which currently can only be diagnosed post-mortem. Now, of course, we can't know for certain that CTE is what caused these people who were successful in their sports, who had fame and power and bright futures to destroy all of that. But personally, I think that's the most likely reason. Until the autopsy of Aaron Hernandez, I could kind of like compartmentalize my concerns about how professionals and maybe even I might be affected by what seems to be an immutable part of the game, which is some level of brain damage. You know, I could just assume that maybe he was a part of some criminal culture and that's what caused this murder, but I don't believe that anymore. And this is how I fell out of love with a hobby, a sport that I had thousands of hours of enjoyment watching and participating in. I just started doing other stuff on my Sundays. In fact, that's one of the main things I cut out of my life that made room for me to start making YouTube videos. What I'm hopefully demonstrating to you is that you may love motorcycles today. You may love riding them, tinkering with them, talking about them with people, but tragedy could sap all that love away and leave you feeling confused and empty. I only personally know a few people who ride motorcycles, and if any of them lost their lives while riding, I don't think it would lead me to the level of disillusionment that I had with football, but if you did, that is one of many normal reactions. You wouldn't need to feel ashamed of that. You aren't any less of a man for wanting to sell your bike or focus on a different hobby. I want you to keep riding if it makes you happy, but it's valid if you don't. If you were to experience the tragedy of knowing somebody or having a friend who dies on their motorcycle, you should find a place to talk about how you feel, either with friends and family or with an online community like Reddit. I say this as somebody who is generally very internal with my thought processes. 
it's good to let that stuff out to a receptive community. Ugh. So that started out light and breezy, but you know, ended real heavy. Aren't you glad that it wasn't like that the whole time? Speaking of talking about stuff, uh, if you want to talk about motorcycles and tangential topics, feel free to join my Discord. It's a very welcoming community, I think. Nobody in there seems like an asshole. Uh, I think, honestly, I think I'm the biggest asshole in there. If you didn't like this video already, you should do that. Uh, if you're one of my regulars and you haven't liked this video by now, shame on you. Shame, shame. Uh, I expect you to like it before you watch it and uh, subscribe, you know, if you want more weird shit like this. Also, I have so far been very good about doing my monthly streams, which uh, are fun, which is probably why I'm consistent with it. And uh, you guys seem to enjoy it. I've been pleasantly surprised how many people show up to that stuff. So uh, come hang out for that. They're about monthly, middle of the month on one of the weekends. We look at memes. Uh, we look at other people's motorcycle videos and I kind of like just critique them maybe or give my thoughts. Uh, we make fun of Cycle Cruiser, which is my favorite part. Things are so fucked up in the world right now that I feel a little guilty even mentioning, but you can support me on Patreon, but please do not unless you are like one of the fortunate people that have not been fucked over by this pandemic. Really, the money just helps me buy silly costumes and equipment upgrades. So until next time, ride fast and take chances. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. 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 Ah, encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. They did an autopsy in Hernandez and found that he had a very advanced form of chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It can't. Fuck, and then I fucked up that part. Oh, I fucked up the easy part. No!